Hi, I'm Robert Hoot Gibson, and I flew five times aboard the space shuttle. Uh, my first time, 1984, then 1986, 1988, 1992, and finally 1995. So we made it to orbit, and it was an interesting story of that launch as well, uh, because we didn't know it, but during the launch, something happened something broke loose. And it was the nose cap ablative on the right hand solid rocket booster disintegrated during launch and it showered the right wing of the space shuttle Atlantis with debris. Well this is similar to what happened to Columbia where Columbia got a hole knocked in its left wing and as we saw that had tragic results during the re-entry. In our case we didn't know it at the time but the day after we got to space, Mission Control came up and said, guys, we want you to take the shuttle's robot arm and hang it over the side of the orbiter and look at your right wing and tell us what you see. And I'll never forget, we looked at the right wing and when we first brought up the end effector camera, I said to myself, we are going to die because I was looking at more than 700 shredded tiles on the right wing of Atlantis. Now I mentioned earlier that we were a classified mission. We were a Department of Defense flight. So we weren't able to send clear video down to the ground. In fact, the Department of Defense actually wanted us to be able to send no video down to the ground at all. And the safety folks at NASA persisted and they relented and let us send encrypted video down to the ground. Well, the problem with encrypted video is what the camera does is it shoots a frame and then it encrypts it, and that takes about three seconds and it sends it, and then it shoots another frame, encrypts it, and sends it. So there's a big delay. And what does that translate into? That translate into, translates into very poor resolution on the video. So down on the ground, apparently, they looked at this video and they concluded this isn't tile damage. These, these are just lights and shadows that the guys are seeing. There was a failure to communicate that happened on this mission because when I was talking on the microphone down to the ground, I'm saying very clearly we're seeing a lot of tile damage on the right wing. And what mission control or what the engineers saw down on the ground, they concluded this wasn't tile damage, this was just lights and shadows. And they failed to heed the fact that I said, I'm seeing a lot of tile damage. And they also didn't consider the fact that I'm not looking at encrypted video, I'm looking at clear video on board because it's not encrypted when I'm looking at it. So I had the better view of it. So. The engineers went and looked at it for about two days, and they came back and they called up and said, Hoot, we've got, uh, we've got the answer. And I said, okay, what, what do you got? And they said, it's no problem at all, just re-enter like normal. And I, I couldn't hardly believe it. And I keyed the mic and I, I was talking to uh, the Capcom and I said, Dave, Dave, what are they basing that on? And of course, he, he doesn't have that answer right at his fingertips. So he said, well, stand by. And he came back about 30 minutes later and he said, okay, they've concluded it's not an issue because there's, there's nothing worse than anything that we've seen on previous flights. Well, I've been here since before the first launch of the first space shuttle and I've never seen anything like this. But I said, okay, you guys are the experts and mostly because I just didn't want to get into a big argument with mission control uh, over the loop. And so the rest of my crew apparently decided that, okay, we're all right, mission control says it's okay, only I didn't believe them. Because I had been there, like I say, since before STS-1, and we had never had tile damage like this before. What mission control never said to me was, you guys aren't seeing tile damage, you're just seeing lights and shadows. And if they had passed me that little piece of information, I could have passed them the information that, well, wait, you don't understand. I'm looking at clear video. I'm seeing tile damage. You guys are not seeing it correctly. So there was a failure to communicate there. So anyway, we start our re-entry, 
and we're coming back down to land. And in the course of the reentry, I knew that if we burned through on the right wing, we'd start to get a whole lot of drag on that side. And the way I would be able to know that, hey, we're really in trouble now, is that I would see a split in the flight controls. I'd see one elevon going up and the other elevon going down, meaning that we had an asymmetric drag situation going on in the orbiter and we were really in trouble. And I knew that I would have maybe 30 seconds to tell them what I thought of their analysis uh, before we were destroyed during the reentry. And obviously, it all worked out okay. We made it through the heating region, but when we landed at Edwards Air Force Base in California and got out of the orbiter, there was already a crowd of people over on the right side of the space shuttle Atlantis looking at our right wing, looking at all the shredded tiles that we had, but even more significant perhaps was the one entirely missing tile that we had probably which burned up uh, during re-entry and the melted metal that we had on the surface of the orbiter. Now we were fortunate because there was a large steel plate in that area that had something to do with an L-band antenna that was in that position. And the steel plate during the heating region lasted a lot longer than aluminum would have and it took it a while to melt through the steel plate and it was working on the aluminum when we successfully made it through the heating region. So as a result we had melted metal but we did not burn through. And then one of the, I don't know if it was frustrating or if it was amusing, comments was, after the mission, was, why didn't you guys tell us about this? And the answer was, I think I told you about it. I don't think you listened to us. And we covered that in the debrief. So it was an interesting mission because it was kind of difficult to get to space in the first place. It was kind of difficult getting back. Uh, during the re-entry and we had what I guess would be considered a very close call. And in fact, this was only the second launch after the Challenger accident. STS-27 was the second time we went back to space. If we had burned up on re-entry, the location where we would have gone down would have been up over the North Pacific Ocean, over the Aleutian Islands, south of the Aleutian Islands we probably would have basically disappeared at sea. It would have been really difficult to figure it out, although in hindsight they probably would have looked at the tile damage on the right side of the wing and concluded that something went wrong on that right wing. But had we been lost on STS-27, I'm sure that would have been the end of the space shuttle program because we spent all that time and effort to redesign after Challenger, Mission 25. If we lost Mission 27, it would have been the end of the space program. So I'm happy for a whole lot of reasons, obviously because I'm still here that that didn't happen, but it also would have been a very sad ending uh, to the space shuttle program. So there were funny parts of it and there were some kind of serious and not so funny parts of it, but a very fascinating program to have been involved in and I'm a very fortunate person that I got to fly five missions.